And y'all are in Florida, right? Uh, no, no I'm, in, uh, I'm in New York. New York? Both of y'all? Uh, well, actually, I, I actually just moved from New York about a few months ago to outside of Kansas City, so I was in New York, but now um, I re- my family and I just relocated, so we're 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 a uh, we're, we're a coastal relationship, Eric and I now. So we're not coastal, but uh, across the country. Oh, so y'all y'all are living out the actual movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> All right, um, so let me go, uh, go ahead and do the intro for uh, Film Noobs, and then we'll start, uh, we'll get introduced to y'all. Um, so if um, y'all been listening the last couple of uh, weeks, um, Film Noob guys out there, all three of my listeners, um, we are back today this week. Uh, we have two of our previous winners from the uh, from our film festival. Um, they won, uh, let me see, make sure I get everything correct here, because um, I kind of like to show off a little bit. Um, what was it? Best uh, directing. Ah, oh, come on, stupid mouse. Thought I had this. We should know that too, but it's exactly. like um, I remember Eric. I remember Eric got into work because I was very proud of that. Um, and I think we got best editing, if I remember right. But yeah, yeah. best editing, best male actor, I think. Yeah. Oh, and action film. Those were okay, the gotcha. All right. Um, their their movie called In Action, which is pretty cool but the bad thing is if you try to google it you get all this other stuff <laughs> but way, um they're here today um we're going to talk to them about their film their their process and everything and again thank you for joining us um eric and sean right I, i'm not going to torture y'all's last name because i because <laughs> i've already done that to a couple of people um so real quick introduce yourselves guys great you want to go first sure definitely so sean Keneally here. Uh, thanks again for having us, David. We're really excited to talk. Uh, I'm a writer and filmmaker based outside of Kansas City right now. Um, you know, I'll let Eric do an intro for himself, of course, but we've been collaborating for about 10 years now, just kind of writing wacky action scripts and comedy scripts. And we finally just eventually put our, you know, our money where our mouth is and wanted to make our own feature, which kind of led us to an action. But yeah, really excited to be uh, chatting about our future projects and also just what, what, got, what got us to River City Film Festival, which is also a blast. Hi, how are you? This is uh, Eric Silvera. Uh, I am Sean's partner. Um, I'm also a writer and filmmaker. I'm based out of New York. And um, if you do Google in action, we, we screwed up. We, we should have changed the title to something uh, that SEO would not um, fuck up. Um, because all you get is in action. You get like Looney Tunes back in action. You get action movie. Uh, so, because, so if you want to check out the movie or Google it, uh, type in inaction and then put the last name Silvera in or so Keneally or something like that and then like <laughs> tons of stuff pops up about it <laughs> um, so uh that was our our lesson for our next film was to have a, a better title um, <laughs> that worked well uh, on the internet um and I'm excited to chat with you guys today well I mean you got to think about it dual sword here because if you google inaction it's going to pop up with your film along with everybody else so it kind of raises up your metadata in that in that perspective, you know. Yeah. I think you're like, oh, I have to know what I'm looking for. <laughs> we, had a, we had a moment. We almost we were gonna call the we an action was a title for a long time, and originally it was called something completely different. And then we had a our one of our original producers that kind of helped us get the movie rolling, and then eventually kind of just fell off. The, he had a mental breakdown and fell off, and when we don't really know where he went. Um, but uh, he he redubbed the movie in action. Um, and then we're always like, yeah, we're going to change the title. And at one point we we're going to call it lethal writers, which would have been much better for, for searching on the internet. But I had a friend, we were like workshopping with some friends and texting. My friend was like, it actually was no, that like lethal writer sounds like a movie for, for wusses. He's like, in action sounds like a real, like hardcore action movie. We we're like, all right, cool. We'll keep it. Um, and we fucked up. So uh, <laughs> you know, it's a clever title, but not good for finding. Even if you like look it up on like Paramount Plus or like yeah. you know Amazon, it's like you always get like a, a crazy action movie instead of that first. <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> yeah, but that's right. I I love the film. Uh, apparently, y'all won three three awards out of the, the film festival. Um, not to say that there was only like four of y'all, but you know y'all won three. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding, guys. I'm kidding. <laughs> When when we when we saw the film, um, especially myself, uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really really quirky. The fact that, and, and I hate to say it, I'm going to spoil this for for a lot of viewers out there who haven't seen it. Um, but shame on you if you haven't seen it. Um, I thought it was quirky because the whole movie is you too, you know. And and y'all get creative with a couple shots here and there, you know, imposing like a 
one or two other fi- I don't want to make, completely like give it away, but <laughs> the whole film is just y'all two talking, going through the things, actually going through action sequences, um, creative camera shots. And so I thought it was the quirkiest, most creative movie, action film, actually. <laughs> so I was like, Thank you know, you. that my votes had hands down because for two guys to do something like this was really, really awesome. Um, right, thanks, let's David. Talk about the creative process for this. What 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 got y'all thinking, or what? Yeah. Um. So I could I I could uh, I can't handle that one. So Sean and I have been working. This, so we met in um in our in our in grad school in a, in an MFA program, and um we had you know bonded over our kind of love of genre films, action, horror, stuff like that. Uh, we started writing together, and we wrote like a a big budget action script. Um you know, like in the vein of like the 80s and 90s stuff that we grew up loving. And, uh, you know, we try to get some, you know, we entered a couple of concepts, we try to submit that and, and not much happened with it. Um, and so, and this is back in now, <laughs> to, to the end of end of 2013, uh, where we used to meet this pizza place in the, um, in the West Village and we walked in and we, you know, Sean, we're coming up kind of like, all right, we finished this script, like, we'll try and get it out there. What, what do we do next? Um, and uh, Sean said to me, I want to make an action movie with two people in one room, sitting in chairs, talking to each other. And I said, I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, but uh, OK, let's talk about it. Um, and he, and he kind of pitched me this this whole thing. And he basically said to me, he goes, I want to call it How to Write and Start Your Own Action Movie. And um, at the time, I was doing stand-up comedy uh, as well. And Sean was acting. He's like, he's like, He's like, you can do this. He's like, let, let, let us be the start. Like, let's make something that like no one can deny that like we we own and like you know we, get, we can get off the ground. And I said okay. And as I left the the our meeting, I was walking uh, down the West Coast to meet my wife for dinner and and a friend who actually um, and his wife who actually became our, our producer. He was a producer, uh, and so kind of was fortuitous timing. Um, and I kept seeing this like action i kept seeing a scene where we were sitting in chairs in a car chase and there was no car there was no other there's actually no cars there's no chase but the yeah. camera was always moving and i kept thinking like, editing and like the sound design and stuff maybe we can really pull this off so i i told the, this guy alex our producer and he said oh that's a crazy concept he said well i'll think about it and and uh you know it didn't go much in there and then i called sean and said let's do it let's meet let's figure this out and uh we took it from there and then it was a a six-year process. We started writing in January 2014. It was a six-year process from um from writing the script to being uh, in our first film festival <laughs> back in March 8th of 2020. Yeah, and I would say it definitely really did start as more of like a theater project. We did a reading in Eric's apartment after we wrote the first draft of it, and it really was just us sitting in chairs. You know, um, you know, we kind of just like described action scenes and we described fighting scenes. But afterwards, we talked to our mostly our friends who like were our audience in Eric's living room. And they were like, yeah, you know, if you closed your eyes, you really could kind of see the action scene. So I think that was kind of after doing the initial re- after doing the initial reading, which was just like so bare bones. I think that was kind of like, all right, let's try to let's see, like, let's take it to the next level. So then we then we filmed us sitting in chairs. So, again, like it was completely just Eric and I in a room, just two cameras on us. And we we cut a very basic um, edit of the movie of the feature of just kind of like going back and forth quickly and like added sound design, like just like added like some very minimal effects that you could do in iMovie, like very, very basic. But then we showed that to some people and they're like, OK, I can see it a little more. So I feel like yeah, they were like t- Sean edited it, and they're like 10 minutes of that. Like there was like, you know, 80 minutes, whatever it was, 70, 80 minutes of that. And it, and it was not great, but they were like 10 minutes that were fucking awesome and it was like, <laughs> like enough to like okay maybe there's something here right right and, that, and like and then sean cut a trailer for that and that was like what made the major difference for people to see like a two-minute trailer of us talking but like with all the quick cutting what a plot could be and it was like people were like oh okay i, I kind of get this yeah but i feel like sometimes when you have an unconventional idea what's like what this was originally you, i mean you kind of have to convince people but like you kind of have to like give them a little bit of like proof of this is what it could be so we we really took it from like just a stage reading to like a very basic cut and then we kind of like just convinced people to get on board with us. And then the project ended up like getting a little bigger than we originally intended, which is which was a good thing, obviously. But yeah. um, we still kind of like we, I think we stuck to that core idea of just like two people interacting most of the time, kind of like a theatery feel, but making it feel like a big budget film. So that, that was the end game. That's awesome. Yeah, because a lot of times um, and I know you, um, Eric, right. You said um, you went to school. Um, well, y'all both went to school. 
And one of the things I know when I went to school that was always hard, especially when you have those projects like, oh, short film, three weeks, turn it in. And of course, us being filmmakers, we're like, oh yeah, man, I could do this with like 30 people and five locations and fucking a million dollars. And you're like, dude, you're an undergrad. You know? <laughs> yeah. You're a fucking undergrad. <laughs> Two people, one room. Yeah. Go. You know? Yeah, we like, we we were um naive enough to be like we because you know originally our goal was like we're gonna make this for like ten thousand dollars. And when it wasn't made for ten, it was made we but we did we were like adamant that we could do it for like 20 and then it became th like a thirty thousand dollar movie name, which is like and for us to come as far as we have, you know, to film festivals and we won awards and then we got picked up, you know, by a, a great distributor and made it all these platforms. Like we've it did more, it did like everything we wanted and, and you know and and that was re re really cool but we were adamant like it has to be low budget and we have to be able to like prove you can make something this weird kind of concept of a low budget action movie with two people actually work so we put these crazy parameters on ourselves um yeah and we were naive enough at the time to be like we, we can we can do it like it's fine like we'll make yeah. it work and, and and just convince people like yeah like this is you know, even our crew would be like, I don't, I don't like what like what are we doing here? Like, like this is like they're like they kept being like, we filmed the car chase, you know, for people who haven't watched it. The cars are yeah. literally just sitting in a car seat, and that's it. But there's no car. We just put yeah. black curtains around us, create like strobe light effects, and had it. And even the crew was like, You sure you don't want us to like put you in a car and like <laughs> we, like and like we'll just film you around the car? We're like, no, we want to be sitting in this fucked up car seat that Sean found yeah. in a basement, like by the trash. <laughs> That we could pull that we kept for for years. They're like, we're going to use this for the car chase scene years from now. <laughs> yeah, but there was definitely a lot of convincing, especially our DP, who was like our greatest ally, but also pushed us a lot. Was yeah. like, let's just go to a car. Like, what are you guys doing? And like, let's just like sprinkle some. And our editor was like, let's just get some outdoor shots and sprinkle some gloss on the ground. And eventually, it just took a lot of like you know collaborating, convincing, and like just making sure they were aware of what our perimeters were. So I feel like we we sometimes made a harder job for ourselves, but like that was the goal to like like Eric said. Well, like I said, I, I think it's it's brilliant because again, a lot of filmmakers, independent low budget filmmakers that are starting out, myself included, first project, I went way overboard. I had like 30 people on my crew and like fucking 20 zombies and makeup artists. <laughs> oh, awesome. I want to see that. <laughs> and so I was like, I went way overboard with with time, money, and everything, and I was like, "Fuck, dude!" Luckily enough, it got into distribution, but no, no, no. I would have <laughs> been like, "No, I would have been like, fuck yeah, dude! I, I could make more movies instead of fucking owing people still to this day, like yeah. thirty years later." Yeah. But so that that's brilliant. That's like they should be teaching those kind of parameters in school to where like be creative, be you know cognizant of what you can do, can't do and how to use it to the best of your ability. Because, I, again, I thought it was brilliant the way y'all did everything. You really kept, if, if you pay attention, you're in it, you're in it. You know, you kept on captivated. Um, there wasn't, I don't think there was any real moment where I was taken out of the scene because of something that wasn't there. The only two things I did, I want to ask real quick about was, one, at the beginning, you had an animation, and then towards the end, you had a uh, kind of like, not really stop motion, but I guess puppets. Or the toys, yeah, there's the toys. toys. <laughs> so let's talk about that real quick uh, in in the movie. What, what what was the creative decision for that? Uh, I can take the first one if you want, Eric. The animation. Sure. Yeah. So I think um, for the animation, it was we had one action sequence in mind um, that took place on an elevator shaft and people battling, and half of it was half of it was me on an elevator battling a guy. The other half was Eric dangling from a ladder, and then the elevator explodes. It was kind of like this was like our I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't say it was our centerpiece, but it was like it was the moment in the film where we were like really pushing the envelope of like what a big budget movie could be. Yeah. And I think like I think it was at a point of the movie where we really wanted to also kind of a uh, uh, like explore like what like what what the movie could feel like in our heads, like not just like not just us describing it, but kind of give the audience a little bit of like an insight to be like um, like even even though like it's kind of feels like a theater piece, like we wanted to like show that we wanted to like show another layer of like what the film could be so we kind of like use the animation to like really kind of like push the envelope of like how we were describing things because yeah. in all of these action -y scenes with the animation it's still us talking behind it but yeah. because they were so over the top we kind of wanted to give the audience a little bit of like a taste of like how big it could be even though it wasn't like real per se 
And it was a really good breather, uh, especially. Yeah, and also a breather to your point. Yeah. Like, just kind of mix it up because it is a lot of Eric and I talking. So it's like, oh, some, something new to give the audience a breath, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then with the um, with the toys uh, at the end. So you know, we we kind of felt like uh, the first act of the film. You know, so the, the you know the film is um, so two guys. They basically they used to work together uh, as writing partners. And move to different areas of the country. They have a falling out. They separate. They reunite at a wedding, and uh, they decide to start working together again through their like middle age, like drifting and like kind of dissatisfaction. Like, all right, let's let's do something that made us happy at one point. And they, and they collaborate. They get caught in to this whole conspiracy, right? Yeah. So we knew the first act was going to be kind of like this, like two bros talking. That was like I was like, let's just have guys talking and re- reference movies and like be very like uh, kind of. Stack like the the shots are very simple. It's there's not you know it's like this cue that's talking and we'll cut between them and that'll be what it is. And then we said second half of the film will be like where they wind up in this underground layer and it becomes like an action film. And that's where we'll have like you know uh, uh, the longer takes and the camera will move and, and it'll be it'll feel like handheld stuff and it'll feel like an action movie without true action. That's where we got the the animated sequence. You know that's where we had the second of the animated sequences that Sean talked about. And then the third act of the film we were like. It's got to now, like, people have watched the movie for an hour. Let it devolve into, like, something completely ridiculous. And, like, people understand that, like, there's a car chase scene, but there's no car. There's, like, a, a shootout, but there's just oh two guys shooting guns and blood spraying on them. Right? You know, it was like, let it feel like this ridiculous thing. So it starts as a comedy, becomes, quote, unquote, an action movie, but it's still, it's still a comedy. And then by the third part, it's like, let it, we've, like, it's, we've been referencing action films. Let it be almost as a meta version of what it can be. And, the idea was like by the time we got to this action sequence, it's all right. We've got animation, we've got talking, we've got handheld shots. How do we just like convey action in a house where it's not like us talking again? And so we're like, well, let's use toys. And 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 the the frame device in the movie is that these guys are talking in a therapist's office throughout the film, or you you figure that out. And so like it's almost like they're playing therapy for the therapist. They're showing the therapist what they would have done. Um, and, and so we we're like. I think that the, I kept saying the show toys are going to work. And he's like, I, I don't know, man. Like I, he keeps saying, I'm not sure. I was like, I, 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 I don't know. And you know, we're like, do we do pictures? Do we do the, and then I was, I went to see wonder woman with my parents back in I don't know, 2007, whenever it came out, I had taken out, eating a pop, a pop brownie. and was sitting with my parents and, and they, you know, they had no idea. And I'm watching wonder woman. There's something, I couldn't tell you what happened in wonder woman because it's been five years and I was <laughs> very fucking baked. Um, but I just remember texting Sean, I know how we can, I know how we can make the toys work now. I know how it can happen. And he goes, all right. And he goes, tell me, I go, I'm still with my parents. Seeing one <laughs> so I'll call you after. And I, <laughs> and I called him after. And I was like, what if we start with like showing pictures and it's like, we're showing the therapist what happened. And then we're like, actually, no, we got a better way to show you. And so we like worked our way into it. And we just wanted to honestly, like I'm giving like this highfalutin answer. The reality is we just wanted a fun way to break up like what was happening too. And we thought, like I've never seen an action movie with toys, and yeah. like this is a way to kind of illustrate it in a silly way. Because by now we should be having as much fun as we can at the end. Awesome, awesome, yeah. Because I'm telling you, yeah, it it really was. I like that one part. There was a, a point during the shootout where I think is uh, Sean leans over, cleans your face. <laughs> like two seconds. Eric did that. That was the, yeah. Eric just he just did that in the moment, and like we 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 didn't think of that idea. And I remember him doing that and be like, okay, we'll see how that works. And Eric was I like, we gotta was... try that. We gotta. Try. And then in the editing room, I'm like, all right, it's funny. We got all right, it worked. It was. <laughs> because then you come back to to you, and you still like, ah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what did he stop? Like, oh, my God. just go with it. Go with it, David. Just yeah, that's exactly I love, what I, said I love the naked gun right. movies, and we you know that was like that wasn't planned. It wasn't in the script. It was just like we did, it and we were laugh- anyway. We, honestly, we should, when we did it, the crew laughed. It was funny. It was like a, it was an outtake. But it like I kept thinking, I'm gonna we're gonna put that in. She was like, I don't know. It was like, and there was one <laughs> editing session near the end. We're like about to picture lock, and yeah. Sean couldn't make it that day. So yeah. I said, I said, I said, Billy, who's our editor, Billy Naraki. I said, Billy, just just try something for me. <laughs> you were right. You're right. <laughs> and he put it in. He goes, that's funny. He goes, he goes, wait, Eric, watch it. He goes, what if I put it in slow motion? So then he puts it in slow motion. He goes, he goes what if we add like. Beethoven symphony to it. I was like, let's give it a shot. We kept going and going. And I was like, this is great. And I called Sean. I go, Sean, I I, I know <laughs> I said we wouldn't do it. I know you told me you didn't want to do it. 
I was like, I was like, but you weren't here, and I, I had to try it, and it works, but it's great. Yeah, that's funny. Oh, adult supervision. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I had to get bad cop out of the room. <laughs> it, that's oh. for, I feel like that's that part is like a make or break for people. Where like if you're watching, you're on board. You're like, okay, this is weird, and either you see that you get it, and you like kind of get what we're going for, or you're like, oh, this is not an action movie. This is just too fucking idiots. And like, so like, <laughs> I, we, I love that you like <laughs> you appreciate that because we've seen other hey, people I'll like, tell you, why I'll would you do you. that? I, I I love the film. I thought it was great. And you are right. Like the first half is very Tar- Tarantino ish because it's just banter back 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 back. You know, very almost like basic cutting. And, yep, and just sure. your AB, you know, combo, da, da, da. and then you go into the second half, and it's a transition into a different type of of movie. And you're like, okay, cool, cool, cool. So if you're watching everything and you pay attention to the little nuances the movie has, you're like, man, these guys got gold. This is this is pretty badass, you know. And so that's why we're like, yes, editing, great, you know, fucking <laughs> action film, yes, great, you know, acting, yes. <laughs> and I have to tell you, the editing for for us that was, um, you know, we. To, to be honest with you, we met our editor, uh, Sean, do you find him? You and Alex. He's a Craigslist diamond. Yeah, Craigslist. Really? Uh, it was like yeah. cra- crazy. And he had been he had been working on this other short film. It was a, and it was a one-person film. And he showed us like a, a version of it. And he, and he had edited some, like he had edited a couple small features, some indie features. And I, and but like, you know, we we were like, that's cool. But we showed this this film and this one guy and he, and I was like, he made a short film. It wasn't. An, it's about a. Uh, it was about an alcoholic, but yeah. he made this alcoholic experience feel like an action film. One guy. And remember thinking, he just showed us a small footage. We we're like, this. This has got to be the guy that he's going to be able to figure this out. And he really took the film. He he really took what we had and, and brought it to the, the next level. But I think the reason why we had success with, success with him, obviously, Sean and I and our producer Al, you know, Alex and Ernest and we were we were initially a trio and when you know every step of the way we kept pushing and pushing and going further um but billy took everything that we had and and, and then like helped us we had a vision a very specific vision but then he helped be like cut it this way or try try it like this or th- think of it like that and then and, and, and took it to the next level and he made those kind of talking scenes pretty dynamic even though it's literally just <laughs> us, us back and forth bitching yeah. at each other <laughs> well, I mean, you you know what they always say that film is is done what three times? Yeah, right. In, in, yeah, in the totally. Part, one when you shoot it, and one in the edit. So, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, let, let's circle back real quick. You said your budget was roughly about thirty. Yeah, it became about thirty, and we shot we 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 got through almost all of post production, most of post production with like a tw- like twenty one thousand dollars, Sean. I think like yeah. we, we so we close. we did a Kickstarter campaign back in 2015 that got picked up by some uh some action film blogs and so we we hit our, i think our goal was maybe 20 at the time or tw- I, tw- I forget what it was we've raised 22,000 something dollars and you know after taxes you know no one yeah. tells you a kickstarter yeah. that like they take a oh, bite <laughs> if you if you raise this much you actually sort of have to pay taxes on it. we're like oh and we have to pay our own like oh we got to expose our bu- is our income we didn't make twenty two thousand dollars. Like, well, like, oh, okay. So we, after like all that, I think we were left with like eighteen or nineteen. I, I forget the exact amount. And we, we basically took whatever we made from Kickstarter and made it as far as we could through, um, through post production. We got pretty far, and then it got to the point where it was like, all right, we gotta, we have to figure this out and raise a little bit more money. And we, we were able to do it. And um, yeah. I mean, I feel like sometimes when you're making independent feature, you have to just, you can't plan for the end because otherwise, it's you don't know how to get there. So we literally, we raised enough funds to start. But yeah. we knew we were, I mean, we, we didn't fully know, but I think we both had a feeling like we were going to have to figure something out at the end, but we got as far as we could. And then we just like, okay, we got to figure something else out. And we, you know, we took a credit card out. <laughs> that was one of the things we did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. So, so, Sean and I have jobs. And so we're like, all right, we were we talked to our wives and we're like, hey, we got to put a little dough in. And they were like, okay, like, yeah. fin- you've been fucking doing this for years. Finish up, get it right. And we yeah. were raised a little bit more and we got there. We did what we had to do, but we, you know, it was a $30,000 movie. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, because a, a lot of the issues stem from money, oh, um, yeah. especially for us independent guys. Because yep. I mean, again, my film, um, I raised like five hundred bucks, and, yeah. and how was it? Because again, nobody really understood the concept of my film, and they're like, uh, "You're a new guy. You're not gonna make your film." I'm yeah, like, yeah. "Fuck you! I'm gonna make my film." <laughs> yeah, um, but then I went into debt. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah that's time. interesting. So you used blogs to help you out push the film. What 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 was some of the other things that y'all used to help you know 
eat we we did a, i think we did a little bit of a very small little bit of like facebook marketing at the time I mean, like a couple hundred bucks something like that and and that didn't notice anything and then honestly we just fucking we the blogs and we hustled like we emailed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people and we told you know co-workers and tell your friends and, and we just kept pushing it on you know facebook and instagram at the time this is 2015 there weren't there weren't even that many platforms at the time and yeah. i think the combination of just like using our networks and asking them to push it out and do you know someone my, my you know like and and we just kept going and going and yeah. uh you know 25 bucks there 50 bucks there 100 bucks there, like little pops there over time added up and so i you know, that was a, a very, very stressful month. I think yeah. Sean and I basically were like, we never want to do a Kickstarter or crowdfunding campaign. Yeah, and that was like too that. much. It, it was... I think, yeah, it was a lot. But I think also it helped. I mean, because I we, you know, it started with just, you know, me and Eric, and then we we brought up an older producer on, and then our friend Alex Nordison came on. I feel like as we kept growing our team, like it was really, it was really a goal of ours to make sure everyone that was in the project felt like they had some ownership in it. And like it was something they could be proud of. And we really wanted to collaborate with them to make sure like they had their mark on it. Like this wasn't just the Eric and Sean show. Like it, we wanted to talk about everyone's ideas and incorporate them and learn from them. So I think because of that, like I think that encouraged our team to like tell their friends as well. Cause you know, our network was only so big. You have to bring people on that you trust and want to work with that like also want to tell their friends about it. So, so I mean, a lot of like the fundraising didn't come from people we knew. I mean, it came from our, um, our, uh, you know, our, our producers yeah. friends that we didn't know our producers family that we had no relationship with so i think for independent filmmakers especially you got to find people you want to work with that you trust but like get them excited about your project because they're going to help you fundraise at the end of the day and like make the project better than it could be and we and I, you know and sean brought up the other thing that was is we had the prototype of of the original version of the film this kind of you know just version of us literally sitting in chairs that was you know, we shot in in, in <laughs> about eight hours in brooklyn one day um but that when that was cut together with the trailer that footage was enough to be like oh these guys we have to have a clear vision and they we've proven that we can make something like it work and so like the fact that we could show that to other filmmakers and other kind of um uh, and, and other crew members to get them on board allow them to then believe in the project too so i you know if there's filmmakers out there my recommendation is like i know it's hard to say like just go shoot something but like sometimes if you have an idea and a concept like you know i think we spent what do we like, are we get we we chart we gave filmmakers 100 two 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 dp yeah, that we yeah knew. so we got them lunch and paid them each 100 bucks i think and yeah. and it was like all right like put a little a little bit of money if you if you can do it like towards making something um, like the most very basic version of it I mean, I know it sounds silly, but like you're saying, but like, I mean, our most phones like have pretty decent cameras. Oh, and like, this yeah. is, you know, it's like, you know, I just like, even if you just make like the worst version of what it could be, but like you own it, you're like, I know this is like, this isn't what I want the movie to be, but like, I'm just like showing you what it could be. I feel like, you know, people kind of, I feel like they feed off that passion and like that drive that you're sharing. Yeah. So even if you have anything to share, it's like, I think it's, it's, it's definitely better than like just having like a big a script in your draw that like, you know, could be good. Like make a bad version of it. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Just like make some version of it that you yeah. can share with people. And if you get one person on board, it's like, you're a step closer. And like, I don't know, that was kind of our, well, how we did it. I mean, we, Sh Sean and I shot something um, recently back in November. And, and before we did that, you know, uh, our cinematographer came over with his camera and we, we filmed, like, just, we just, took some shots of like what we wanted it to be. And then we, um, you know, we, 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 Sean literally said like, I used my camera when I used my wife as like, it was a the lead role was for an actor, but I used my wife as the actor at like 10 o'clock. I was like, hey, I, need, I need to shoot something really fast. I need some help. I need to prove out like how this can work out. And I shot the stuff on my phone that Sean and I had kind of mapped out with our cinematographer and um, I edited it together. And then when crew came to work on the project, they're like, Oh, this is what you want. Oh, we got it. And then we did have it. And Sean and I did the other half together. And we used literally Sean. It was like two two people in a room in, in a bed. Sean was one of the was the actor for that part. And then we used a fucking skeleton. Like it was around, it was after <laughs> Halloween. Halloween had a skeleton. Not a human skeleton. <laughs> like a totally skeleton. And I was like, and we just I, you know, we, here are the two shots, here are the angles, and you know, you you be that you'll now you'll be the wife. Now the skeleton will be the husband. And and then we put that together, we added that together, and like. Oh wow, got it. Great. So all that stuff. I mean, we've come so far since 2015 when we, or 2014 when we shot the rough version of it. Like the phone can do everything now. They have all the tools. Like it's. I think prove if you can prove that to someone, you can raise 
a small amount of money, or at least you can get like people on board to believe in you. And that's that. That's I think our biggest thing as filmmakers we learned is like we just need people just need to believe in your concept, and you need to convince um, a group of them to be like, do this with me. And then of course, like you gotta try and pay them. <laughs> people want to work for free <laughs> but like you know we we've had people work for like in action we got people to work for free or like for a low amount lower than they normally did because they over time believed in what we were doing that is awesome yeah because it is it is um it's contagious it the, the passion especially for our level of filmmaking is very contagious but when you get a fire start i know there was one time when we were on set and uh we have passed the 12 hour mark and we're like you get into that zone where you're filming and you're like, fuck it, dude, just, just keep going, keep going, keep going. We were so worn out, you know, it's just sweat and everything. We're like 15 hours in, we're like, oh, we got to quit. We definitely got to quit because tomorrow we're supposed to start at like, you know, nine o'clock in the morning and it's it's already three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. We got to <laughs> stop, <long> guys. <laughs> get some sleep, some something. Right. So yeah, it, I understand about that fire and the passion because once you get that going, especially, again, our level of filmmaking, Man, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but with that, let me uh, take a quick break. We'll bring you back on, um, and then we'll finish our conversation because I'm, I'm I'm excited. I got so many more questions. I, <laughs> awesome. I got a limited time, and I'm like, ah. It, it just... <laughs> but real quick, uh, let's take a uh, break, and we'll be right back. All right, so we are back, guys. Um, we took a little quick break. You know, had to go feed the dogs, the cats, the chicken, the hog, <laughs> all that good stuff. Um, but we are back. We're talking with Sean and Eric about their film in action. Um, we left off with pretty much, um, what was it, the the hooker y'all got from uh, yeah. Texas? And yeah, exactly. Now, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Now we're, now we're in a throuple friend. together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we were talking about budget and pretty much making it work. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, well, getting excited. That's really what we're talking about. Getting excited about or getting other people excited in your project and believing it. That way you can make something very low budget, very compact work. Um, And I know when right before we started recording, Eric, you and I were talking about how life happens in between the takes. And again, how we have to kind of schedule weekends because we work um or like you talk to me a little bit about that how, how what was that process for y'all yeah that was um you know sean and i both have uh full-time jobs and uh i at the time i had a you know i had a family sean has a family now um we were both married but um you just uh you just gotta like it's like a lot of coordinating a lot of saying to like your wife like hey like we got and these I'm going to do this. Can we, I got to make these weekends work to shoot. And then it's like, like, like you have to say like, and also um, in like the two weeks leading into that weekend, I'm going to be uh, emotionally unavailable because I'm going to be thinking about all the shit that needs to happen and what I need to do. And I'll help out with the kids and I'll help out with family and I'll do what I need to, but like, know that when you're talking to me, I'm going to be somewhere completely different. And I hope you can be okay with that. Um, and, just to you give know, you a little more for Eric, especially, I don't know if it was our last shoot or it was like maybe our last week and our second last week. And I, I think Emily, your wife, was nine months pregnant. You had uh, just bought a house. It was like a, it was, it was just like, it was too much. And like, I mean, I was like, I remember going, you'd be like, Eric, we can like, let me know what you need. And you're like, we're good. I worked it out with my family. But like, to your point, Eric, you just like have to like work it out with your family. And like, thankfully, like, everything worked out great. And like, Emily delivered after the fact and was perfect. But like, I think all of us were like, wow, we have too much on our plate right now <laughs> to like be shooting a feature movie. But like when you're balancing a family, like that's just, you kind of have to like, you're going to be pushed to those limits sometimes. And it's really hard to, it's, it's just, it's, it's hard to balance it all. Yeah. You just, you, the, the reality is like, we love it. And this is our passion and it's our dreams. And like, we, you know, you want to make your dreams come true. And the like, there, no, and you know, when you're a kid, you're like, oh, my dreams are going to come true. And like, I'm going to be, uh, all this is going to happen. But no one fucking tells you that you got to work your ass off to get that. To, 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 you want to be a director, you actually got to direct and make it happen. No one hands it to you. Maybe a couple of people it happens to. Um, so it's like, for us, it's like, this is what we want to do. And um, the, 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 the periods in between when we're working our day jobs are just like the fuel to get us to like the next, yeah. the next project. And so like this, that's what I think we're happiest when we're like on the set. And then we're really stressed out all the periods between, but we're always like reminded of like, Hey man, we're making a movie. Like we're doing something. Cool. Yeah. We're making a movie. Like, yeah. This is awesome. Like we're, we're, we're making it happen. Um, so we just kind of remember that. <laughs> you ever get that postpartum syndrome after the film and you're like, 
man, those were great times. Was like you start <laughs> kind of thinking so back, like, dude, it was just last weekend. You yeah, know? <laughs> that for sure, absolutely, <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, that definitely yeah. rings true. Now, with, with your film, um, I, I know it's in distribution. Um, y'all are everywhere. I mean, uh, on you said Paramount Plus, um, yeah. uh, iTunes, wow. um, Amazon, Tubi. Uh, where else? Um, that's, I think, uh, let's see, I don't, we're a bunch of like the, like you can buy it on VOD anywhere, but then for the free streaming platforms, I know we're on Prime, Paramount Plus, the, uh, like the Tubi, I think, I think at one point Pluto, I don't know or anymore if we're on Pluto, I think they went more to the sports world, but I know we were on like Philo TV. Um, I've, we've heard that we've been on the, on Epics on the cable channel, uh, nice. Epics as well. Um, I think like one or two airings like that. So, um, you know, at a certain point, we used to, they used to give us updates. The, the distributor would be like, oh, hey, you're going to be on here now. And so that, and it's, it came out, it was in, in May of 2021. So we, they kind of stopped telling us. Um, but every now and then we get, I will get text messages. I got a text message from a guy from college who I hadn't, I, mean, I don't think I've seen since 2008, maybe, uh, something like that. I, I, and um, I got a text message and it was like a, a just a screenshot of in action he's like he's like this is was recommended to me on the paramount plus home homepage. i said you looked it up he goes no man it was just recommended to me based on like my choices and he's like that's on my home screen we're like that's fucking awesome and so yeah. what's cool about this guy he's he's actually like a drug scientist he's like studies different kinds of acid and mushrooms and drug pharmacology and all that stuff and, yeah. and he's the you know big time um stoner and and I, and I looked at his um like his his movies the recommended movies it was like in action, I was like, "Oh, it's a stoner comedy for sure." And then it was like, the choices below were like some Machine Gun Kelly movie, uh, yeah, some stoner comedy, kind of <laughs> yeah. some like low budget movie, and then like Ferris Bueller. I was like, "All right, it's a pretty good company. We'll take hey. it." <laughs> <laughs> you got Ferris Bueller in there. That, that's good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. For all the for all the, if everyone's still using a DVD, I think you can also get a DVD of it out there. Like, yeah. like my dream is to go to Walmart one day and see it like in that like ninety nine cent DVD bin that like with like Lethal Weapon Four and all those movies. So uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I know we have a fan in, in the UK. Um, he uh, that loves the watches the Blu Ray like every Christmas because um, he's he'll send me an email and be like, I just watched the movie again, man. It's still fucking funny. And, and I'm like, all right, that's awesome. Great, thanks. <laughs> I want to make it to the dollar store. That that's my. That's goal. what I'm saying. That's that's the goal. Yeah. <laughs> Can I make Those, it to you the know, dollar store bin in that. that yeah, that action movie bin, bin right? <laughs> yep. I'll be like, hell's yeah, I made it to the big time. <laughs> oh man, so how was that? How what was the process for y'all? Because I know y'all did you, you did the the film festival run and y'all did extremely well on the festival run. Um, so how did y'all go from festival to distribution? Yeah, I think the, the festival run for us was definitely kind of like our door into the next level. You know, it, when, I, I think every, every process of this, every part of this, uh, movie making was definitely like a learning experience. Like it just started out with Eric and I, then we got a little bit of a crew, then we made the movie, but we didn't really like know what, we didn't really know how to do the next step as we were doing the step we were on. So we had no idea really what to do for distribution, but we knew we wanted to do a festival run. So um, our first fest was um, Midwest Weird Fest in Wisconsin that we did. And we, we were really, it was a great experience. That was like the one, it was right before COVID happened. So that was the one festival we actually got to go to in person. Yeah. But we we were fortunate enough to win um, best film at that festival, which gave, which gave us a little bit of runway to kind of apply to like um, some other festivals out there. So then we did um, Art of Brooklyn. It, which again was online, but it was a really great network to kind of meet other filmmakers and, you know, get some context. And from Art of Brooklyn, that's when a sales distributor reached out to us and was like, let me talk about your movie. I'd love to love to um, see if I can help you all. So that was kind of like the we, first We won the step. Audience Choice Award there. Oh, also. Audience Choice Award. And, and, that's, you, and that's, I think, what, what prompted them to, to reach out. Sorry, sorry, you yeah. keep going. So no, 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 that's slide. a good point. So I think because we got some uh, recognition at the festivals, that encouraged um, a few sales distributors to come out and just have conversations with us. And um, so, yeah, that was like that was like the beginning of the next step to land us distribution. It wasn't like we didn't really have a connection as we were writing the movie. Like, oh, we know it's going to end up here. It was very like one. It was A, B, C, D, E. We had no idea how we were going to get like, levels later. of a video yeah. game. And, yeah, yeah. and I think with the with the sales agent, the thing with that was, you know, he we're like, he's like, I'm going to go big. I'm going to go broad. And like, you have ones you want to. And we had a couple we were interested in. But, you know, he's like he kind of was like. I don't think you're not going to get picked up by these guys. Like, take that out of your mind. And we're like, we know we're, a, you know, a $30,000 weird independent movie with two people that no one's ever heard of. We got, he's like, and we, so we get that. We don't, we don't think Sony or Fox or Disney's picking us up. We're, we're, we're cool. Yeah. We, we understand that. You don't have, you're not convincing us. Like, we know. 
but he was like, he kind of gave us, I'll go broad, but he was like, I have a targeted outreach, like where I think you you'll wind up and he kind of gave us a list and of what he thought was was realistic and also and there were a couple of distributors on there that we were interested in too already um and then it became a process of what we learned is you know for a movie like ours with no stars and really you know uh low budget like the, the marketing materials are what, what's going to do the trick so for him we our original poster was just like us tied to chairs and he went out with that and we had no offers uh, at all and just in our action it was like and we like we literally just made a poster for like the the, the film festivals it was like a, you know yeah. we used 15 dollars on, on a five 15 dollars on five or a you know a random artist just put the, the logo uh, the title on it um and he came back and goes because your poster sucks we're like okay he's like he goes, you look like two Eastern European dudes in like a hostile movie. He's like, you know, like doesn't scream comedy. <laughs> and uh, he's like, why don't you redo it? So my my I, my wife's one of her best friends was a graphic designer. We talked with her and she'd done a bunch of stuff. And, you know, and she she cut a deal for us because her family you know, were friends. And um, once we redid the poster, all of a sudden we had, um, you know, with, within a couple of days, five offers because the poster then looked like an action film and, and it looked fun. Um, and that was the big thing for us is like the marketing goes a long way to getting used to the next step. Um, and then we, we, one of the distributors was uh, one of the ones that we, was like the one we were hoping would pick us up. And uh, it was the the worst offer, uh, but it was the best deal. Uh, so it was the worst offer, but it was like the, the best distributor and the widest outreach of where they could land us on platforms. And we went with that. And it was important for us to have the reach of the film exceed, you know, the couple bucks that we would maybe make somewhere else um, because what's the point you make a little dough, but if no one can, if they're not on platforms where people can see it, you're not going to get the residuals anyways. Um, Roger, so that, that was yeah. the key thing for us. That's, that's the biggest thing that most people don't realize also is there's a trade-off. There's yeah. always a trade-off. Um, like for me, when my distributor reached out, I had already shelved my film. Um, and I was like, well, I got Amazon account. I'm going to just leave it on Amazon and bucket, you know, residuals, whatever. If somebody watches it, cool. But he was like, dude, I think we could do something with it. I'm like, <laughs> whatever and so i laughed at him he's like no dude just for real, hear me out yada yada and so forth and but it was really good um, of course money wise I, I didn't get much as far as my cut but it got me back out there and now again like ourselves to be in other platforms and i was like well yeah. shit these are platforms i would have never been able to do on my own right but it got me out yeah. there and i know a lot of people they're like well i always get ripped off on my first deal well you get ripped off if you don't know what you're going into yeah. Well, how did y'all feel about that? Do you feel like you know not? I don't. I don't want to use ripped off because ripped off means that you they totally. No, stay. we we don't. No, we don't. We you know we 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 um we had talked to a couple of filmmakers that said the same thing. To, same thing that you know that you heard about. You'll get you're getting ripped off, and and we had talked to these two filmmakers who um you know, a friend of a friend puts in contact with, and and they kind of they are like I think I think they've gone to gone in the past couple of years started to be like pretty big time, but um they were like. Are you looking to make money for this? Or are you looking to get to your next project and get to the next level? We were like, we want to get to the next project, the next level. They're like, that's the answer we were hoping you would say. Now we can actually have a conversation with you because, like, you're not going to make money. Our film came out. They had a, like a star in their film. They had two stars in their film. They're like, didn't make any money. They got a couple of good reviews, and they're like, so don't expect it back. It's you know, they're like that time. They're like, it's been five years. We still haven't made our money back. Like, just know that going in. And so I think those guys gave us some really good advice of like. Look at this as the platform. But like, to, the, look at this as the opportunity to get you to the next project, the next level, whatever you want it to be. And, and that's who you should go in when you get an offer. Who can get you the furthest from that standpoint, and not who can get you the money. So I, we we feel really good about it. And um, you know, I I don't know if I would have felt that way if we didn't have that conversation. But uh, I think we you just have to know and you have to go and knowing what to expect, and then just be okay with that. And as for us, just the fact that we had such wide reach distribution and it's been exciting for us. Yeah. And also I think it's, it's, it's also kind of gives you a little bit of more of a, you know, we, for, we just did a, a short Eric and I, and we kind of, you know, we reached out to an actor that, you know, had, had a little more clout and like had some bigger roles. And, but we were like, Hey, we've done a feature and like, you can yeah. watch it here and not to say they wouldn't have collaborated us if we didn't have that, but I think it helped. So I think just kind of like getting that first project under your belt, having it be out there, it kind of gives you a little bit of more like credit to reach out to bigger right. names that maybe we wouldn't have been able to or felt confident doing before in action. So like just to Eric's point, like I think it's like we use it as like the next level. And now that we've done this next short with like a bigger name actor, it's like, you know, 
you know, we're, we haven't even uh, applied to festivals yet, but like, you know, knock on wood, it goes well, like that'll be like a next step to like other names and like another, another project. So it really, it's just a ladder. It is. It really is yeah. because it was the same um, for us. It was like, we have a movie out there, but now I could turn around and be like, Hey dude, look, you could do a short, no offense to anybody. You could do a short, but most people don't use anything or they don't take that short anywhere. I might, or you could give me a shot because I've done a really, really low, cheesy, stupid film, but somehow or another I got in distribution. And I, now I know the trick to get into distribution. So right. give me a shot. And so far it's worked well for me that now it's like, well, I got a distribution deal. It, you could see where my film's at. You know what I mean? And so I always kind of pick on people. I'm like, dude, where's your film? Can I see your film? If I can't see your film, what are you doing? You're a filmmaker. You're so we're supposed to make films for people to watch. Fuck, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Um, and I was watching, oh, well, I was reading on your, your Rotten Tomatoes, and congratulations on getting on Rotten Tomatoes, by the way. Thank um, you. you have an 83 uh, tomato reading, which is pretty badass. <laughs> it really <laughs> is badass. Um, how did, did you, did you work with the distributor on that, or or was that something that you worked on, on something else, or? We, um, we talked to so there was a couple that so we had gotten we uh we'd sent the film when we were in a i think we were in our second one of our early film festivals we sent the film to maybe film thread or something like that and our couple like we just did our own outreach to yeah. critics and we're like hey we're in this film festival like check it out and we won this award and um and you know most people didn't respond but a couple of people responded and watched it and you know and and then they were um Rotten Tomato approved critics. And so we had like two early reviews that were positive and we we're like, oh shit, like we got to figure this out. And so we wound up learning, like, you know, we talked to, there's, um, I can't, I can't remember the PR company, but there's a company, we were in a film festival and they were part of like the conversation piece. And the guy was like, I help filmmakers, low budget, you know, independent filmmakers, you know, do target outreach to um, Rotten Tomato approved critics. And so we, you know, we talked to this guy, we had a conversation. He's like, there's different levels of what you have to pay me and this and that. And we're like, well, like, you know, like, like if you pay me this, I'll send it to like a hundred critics. If you pay me this, I'll send it to five. And like, you know, there's various ways. But yeah. once we worked with this, this company, they sent, they sent it out on our behalf. And that was the big thing to get it to critics. And then from there, like it kind of snowballed some, like all of a sudden, like, I mean, I think there's like, I actually don't, I haven't looked in a long time because I stopped, I realized I when they started ins insulting us in some of the reviews, yeah. I was like, I don't know if I can, I can look at this. But at, you know, at one point we did kind of like at the end of the ent entire like season of like us, you know, trying to promote it and do marketing on our side and this and that. We, um, I think you know, even those you know, however many reviews on it, Rotten Tomatoes, I think they're like forty or fifty reviews overall. Like it just kind of kept snowballing and getting pushed out, and people found it. Um, and so it was a combination of us targeting people and then using this PR company. To, yeah. to put it to get into critics hands so that could actually yeah. watch it i think the pr company also really helped because i mean there's there's so many rotten tomato critics there's just so many crit critics in general and you know our movie is not meant for um a critic that maybe just wants like you know very serious dramas <laughs> and we went we might not have known that without doing some like heavy duty research so the pr company really helped us kind of like they targeted like specifically people that kind of like you know, like this is like in their wheelhouse of movies and we got some bad reviews. So it's like, it's not, and I remember talking to the PR agent, like we, you could hire me and like, you could just get a rotten score. Like that doesn't mean everyone's going to like you, but, but I think he helped us kind of like people that like understood what we were trying to go for. Or like we, we were in their wheelhouse. So that was that, that, they were definitely helpful for that. Yeah, that was that. You're right. That was that was huge uh, to not get some like some kind of highfalutin movie. Um, yeah. but like people that either like comedies or like action, or like horror, like they went to like a specific audience like that, a specific, you know, cr cr Review, critics yeah. like that. Now, how do you how do you personally deal? Because again, I, I'm talking also from my own personal experience. How did you deal with the guys who start picking on you? Like, oh, these guys are stupid. He's balding. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Two guys in a fucking chair. I mean, they go crazy. Again, I read some of the yeah. reviews. I was like, man, they're a lot nicer to him than they were with me. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you? At the end of the day, I mean, how do you cope with that? Um, I, mean, I feel like that's a tough one for anyone to answer. I don't think there's a, I think we, I think everyone has to have their own version of that answer because I, I think for me, honestly, I just don't, I mean, I read them, but I don't, uh, I don't check in on them often. I feel like with, I feel like Eric would, I'd be like, 
I feel like I would text Eric, like, is there a new review before I would look for a new review? <laughs> like, I didn't want to start yeah. my day with it just because, yeah, yeah. like, at that point, it was already out in the world. And, yeah. like, you know, it was like there was we weren't going to, like, make a new cut of the movie. Like, it was it was what it was. So there's nothing we could do about it. But I do think, like, you just have to kind of take stock and, like, what your mental capacity is for, like, that kind of, like, really, like, just, like, to be frank, like, meanness. I mean, I think they're, I don't know if that's the right there word. There were some but, mean ones. I, I mean, we, sometimes we, you're just we, like, oh, wow, like, they just kind of, like, insulted you. But yeah, it, it's stop. like, I guess. When you put something out in the world, though, you're like you're making yourself more vulnerable, and like that's part of the game, you know. Yeah, I I think I definitely got a point. Where I was like, I'm not look, I'm not looking at this anymore. So like when you say 83, I was like, oh cool, we're there, great, that's awesome. Like I like I you know like I just I was like I'm fucking done. Uh, and our editor Billy, he would like check. I think you know he the lower stakes. The fact that Sean and I are in the movie, we co-wrote it, we co-directed it, we're in our underwear for 25 minutes of it. Like yeah, like just like so like. Like yeah, it started to get where like they were talking about our bodies and like you know like, it was like all right this is like getting weirder and weirder so like I just kind of <laughs> stopped and then you know Billy would be like hey this this came through or he'd be like you guys should read this one like this is cool or like sometimes we we would be like you got this review he goes this review is so mean and so bad you got to check it out <laughs> and then it would border on comedy like there was one we read one it was like these two men think it's two men talking and these two men miss and blah 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 blah. I goes and i goes i bet you my son will love this movie and they've won awards i don't see the merit of this and then you were like looked into the i was like Who the fuck? this is a crazy this is like feels like oddly personal and like yeah. has nothing to do with like they never talk about the movie it was like oddly just about us and then you were like read the background of it you like looked into the critic you're like oh like there's some like deeper psychological shit going on here uh <laughs> yes. okay like and, and you just like take it is but um I don't know. I obviously I also work in sales, and so yeah. my day job is is like pitching and getting rejected. So like <laughs> you know, you you start to like uh, your skin starts to harden a little bit, and so you're like, hey, all right, it's not working out. It's not you know, it's a little hard when it's your own personal project, but like you just take it as it goes. And um, I so I heard someone say like if you read like if you only buy into the good if like you only read the good reviews and buy into that, like you have to like accept the bad ones too. So it's like you're better off just being like. All right, like people like it, cool, whatever. Or like they didn't get it, and that's it. Yeah, and again, it you 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 made a point. The fact that it's you, <laughs> you're you're in the you're in the movie half naked. <laughs> <laughs> one of y'all had a one sock. I can't remember who it was. Y'all had one sock through most of the damn film. I think that was me. Yeah. <laughs> um, see, so I'm like, how do you? Do? They're they're gonna get personal. They're gonna get personal. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it's interesting to see and, and ask filmmakers because it, you're right. Everybody has their own way of dealing with it. I couldn't get over the fact that somebody said uh, speaking two languages was a sign of uh, being uneducated. Whoa! I, I I really, really, really could not cope with that for the longest time. It had it. Fellow filmmaker kind of sat me down there like, dude. Just take it as the fact that one, they watch your film entirely. Two, they took the fucking time to sit there and write these big oration about how your movie sucked, to include the fact that yes, you're you're stupid because you speak two languages. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I've never heard that one before. That's new to me. <laughs> I'm serious. That's like one of the top rated uh, uh, review on uh, IMDb, and I was like, okay, so yeah, it, it, I took it personal. Big, but yeah. because I did, I really took it personal. So I was like, I, I won't look at any IMDb stuff. Like that's like, like is the, I feel like that's the, the wild stuff. west. That's yeah, like, no, that's prison like, rules out there. People it's get like <laughs> fucking really mean in that. Um. <laughs> I thought yeah. Amazon was bad, but IMDb is really bad when it comes to the reviewers. And I'm like, man, dude, oh, yeah. just get over that. <laughs> get over that hump. Once you get <laughs> over the hump, you're you're, you're okay. So let's talk about future projects, guys. Well, so we um we after we finished in action, we were working on a, a horror script, a horror comedy. And I would say it's more like where in action was like action comedy, but it's really comedy first. Action was like secondary. This was yeah. you know horror comedy, and it was horror first, and comedy was like more organic baked into it. So it wasn't goofy, it wasn't wink wink. This was like funny with that. And we um we we I we got picked up and I worked at work to work on the manager and he put us in contact with a producer. And uh, you know, we went through a lot of rounds of editing the script and working through it. And I'd say we learned a lot and we like got close to where like maybe we're gonna have an actor on board. And then it kind of just like went flat. We we got to the point where we were working with this producer and the notes we were getting were like contradicting the early notes, and we're like, yeah, maybe we needed to take a break here. And so long story short, we we paused that and we said, let's. We need to shoot something else right now. Like we like we, we spent the year going through this and it was cool and we got we got pretty far and maybe really let's let's make a horror short 
that we can use kind of like what we do with inaction um, as a prototype to jump off into getting us the funding for the for the future. So we um, we had this. Uh, I wrote this short story years ago this, this, that I always wanted to film as a short, even when we're doing an action. Um, mm -hmm. And I pitched it to Sean and our editor and production partner, um, Billy Naraki, and he's the editor of In Action, and he's also uh, a DP too, and he's a, kind of a an amazing jack of all trades. And they read the short story and they're like, "This is like creepy. Let's like expand." And Sean was like, "You should change. We, you should change the version. Take the version took place in an apartment. Like you should think about making it into a house." And so the way Sean and I write is usually Sean writes something, then I then I do a revision, or I write something, he does a revision. So I took a first draft stab. Sent to Sean, he did a revision, and then we kind of kept going back and forth, and we got into a place, and we shot it in uh, November, um, and we're we're in the deep stages of post production right now. We're uh, composers have been sending us uh, the score, and we we have it with the color corrector and the sound mixing team. We're sending it over this week, so by the end of the month, we'll we'll be done with it, and it's going to be about 20, 22 minutes, and then we'll do the festival run. We'll we'll do the festival run again, and use that to get us to the next level again, the next to get to the, the next feature project. That's the plan. Well, if if you're gonna do the festival run, send it to me, guys. Oh, we will. Yeah. We, oh, yeah, we definitely. Will. Oh, we will. Let, let, sure. let me know before you send it, and and I'll hook y'all up because I love y'all stuff. So thank you. Yeah, thank again. You. Yeah. I, and you know, Dave, you know what's funny about this one? We're in action. Is like two guys talking the whole time this yeah. one is like silent for like the first 12 minutes there's like there's like one line of dialogue and it was really like let's let's do something uh different than what we did now i think our sensibilities i think i don't think we can deny who we are as people <laughs> so yeah. there's like there's shit in there to be like oh yeah like there's a couple moments like yeah these are the same people that made that movie like you can't <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, yeah. you can't kind of deny that Your um, is all over. Oh, yeah, yeah like, there's that <laughs> but we were like let's like let's make something quiet um that's like quiet for a stretch because it's, and it's horror so like let's see what we can do that and um see if we can make it show like the other side of what we can do and, and um so yeah well you'll, you'll hopefully you dig it when we, when we send it over nice yes i'm i'm excited now to see it because if y'all get it done I think our festival this year again falls in December. So let me know, guys. You got <laughs> it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so 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 what about you, Sean? Anything on your end, or y'all still just do collaboration stuff or yeah, I'd say, I mean, I'll, I'll let Eric answer that for himself. But right now, Eric's my go-to guy. So, uh, you know. That's my guy also right there. Yeah, he's my guy right now. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm always, I feel like right now we have a, we have kind of like this Google Doc of script ideas and log lines. So, you know, I have a few on there that I really want to be like, okay, I want to dive into that one next. But I also, I've learned that like, I, re I also want to finish this current short and do it right and get it out there before we kind of spread ourselves too thin, especially between like families and jobs. So, um. But yeah, I mean, we have, a, I, I would love to dive into another feature next. Um, and I have a few, I have a few things on like our, on our log line list that I'm really excited to like poke Eric about soon. But uh, that's, that's in two weeks or so, two weeks or so. <laughs> yeah, we, I feel like we're like, we're like, we got to get like, let's just, yeah, we, 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 in the period after an action came out, um, we stretched ourselves very thin. We were, you know, we're working on this short script. We were working on trying to get it off the ground. We're working on a feature. We're working trying to get that off the ground. We're building out our log lines. We're building out like uh, like um we're doing like like uh script treatments. And like at a certain point, we're like fuck, like we are tired and we've got a, a bunch of material which is great, but like we got to focus on one thing right now and like make it really great. And I, and that that was the the short film became like the one that we could like just like an action. We're like okay, like we're not fully dependent on getting like. The manager, the talk to the producer, and then the picture of this person. Like, we can make this happen, and we can make this good, and we'll just keep doing like what we did last time um, until someone gives us a lot more money to make the next one. <laughs> I, Thank I you. Agree. <laughs> uh, yes. So, wrapping things up, um, who, anybody you want to say, you know, thanks, hello, hi, mom, anything like that. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I, I, for, from the inaction side, there's, there's a lot of crew and we've thanked them over the years, but you know, I think we'd be remiss not to just mention Alex, Nor Alex Nordenson, who is our producer and our right hand person throughout the entire process from, you know, pre-production all the way to the early stages of post. Um, and then, uh, we've been working with Billy Rocky for the past, um, I mean, I guess now like five years on inaction. And then now he's been our, our, our main man on, um, our, our newest film, uh, it's called two knocks on a door um, and guiding us through the entire process, whether it's shooting it, uh, editing with us or editing it and us taking our notes and our shit um, and being like, no, you, this is ridiculous to now, um, you know, 
being kind of like a, a great po post-production consultant too as well um so those are yeah. our, our, our guys yeah and just to jump off of that um mateo marquez and ethan greenfield uh, mateo was our dp on our our last shoot and ethan has been ethan has been our gaffer on both both of our shoots and they've been kind of like our technical wizards and i think one thing about independent filmmaking is like you know i feel like i feel like there's this urge to want to do everything because like you don't have the resources but like i'm not a technical person like I'm, i've gotten better with cameras over the years but like i know that's not my that's not my strong suit so we were very fortunate enough to get people on the board that that there is their strong shoe and that we're friends with them and we trust them. And Ethan Mateo, Ethan and Mateo have definitely been like our technical wizards and we've been very fortunate to have them on board. Yeah, and those guys are gonna those are guys are like on their path to be very big time. So we just got very lucky to, yeah. to meet them. <laughs> yes. to, to know them <laughs> like I, I was Ethan's babysitter when he was a kid and he finished film school. I was like, hey man, like we need a crew to shoot like this very like two days of like something easy. It's like I got a crew, and then like he and Mateo helped build the entire in action audience. Um and they like always give us like like Mateo gave us great notes on, on the script and we give him notes on little things too but um yeah like they're like the young generation like we're like you know I'm about we're middle-aged men at this point um uh, but they're like <laughs> young guys that are like on their path um yeah. and so I'm like when like when do we ride their coattails like we could like when, when, when does that happen? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome guys and again we're talking about in action um great funny act funny movie Action second, <laughs> independent, um, two great, awesome co-writer, directors, um, stars, because <laughs> if you watch the film, you'll understand it. Uh, it it's really crazy. Um, you can watch it on Voodoo. I have to look at my notes. Voodoo, Prime, Paramount Plus. Congratulations on that. Um, Apple TV, uh, Tubi. Uh, you could order it on most uh, pirated sites because... Um, Always go pirate it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, if you really want to support these guys, uh, when you find their film, go ahead, click on it. Uh, hit a review. Hit a like. Uh, give them four or five stars, man. Uh, raise up that metadata because that, that always helps independent filmmakers. Also, be on the lookout for the next project. What's the next project's name? Uh, two Knocks on a Door. Two Knocks on a Door. It's a horror comedy? Uh, I would say sh mainly horror. Horror, straight <laughs> horror. Yeah, straight okay. horror. So it's a little horror flick, um, and hopefully they'll be out by the end of the year. Um, other than that, guys, anything else y'all want to quick? Uh, or did I forget anything? No, no, you nailed it. Thank you for having us yeah. on. This is this has been awesome. And thank you for watching the movie and you know giving us those awards. It was exciting. We we're like, believe me, I'm not an actor. And when 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 we find it, when Sean was like, Eric, you you won best male actor. My wife was like, what? It was like topped up with champagne. So we were, we were really excited. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, great. That's unexpected. Um, but. We're really excited to be part of your festival, and you know we're really honored to um, to receive those awards. and And thank you for having us on the podcast and, and recognizing our film. Yeah, thank you. Everything Eric said and more. Thank you so much, David. We really appreciate it. No, man, I appreciate y'all. And again, it's awesome when when I get a chance to talk to uh, filmmakers who have this passion, this love, this drive, and they come up with some crazy, wild, fucking <laughs> antics. And you're like, "This is new," because I love new, you know. And and, and this is new. What y'all did was really crazy was creative was was just yeah <laughs> so, that means a lot thank you so those awards were well earned and, and again y'all y'all competed with people from around the world so it was it was really really good i loved it and the rest of the guys that voted for it loved it and and we're glad to be able to finally get y'all on the podcast um again life happens <laughs> totally. okay we we're, we're appreciate it we're happy to be on but yeah, thank you guys for giving me all this time and, and, and for, for talking with me. And hopefully, again, I will see you um, at the end of the year for y'all's next film. Uh, hit me up, and, and we'll be sure to take care of y'all. Uh, awesome. I, I love what y'all have been doing. And until next time, guys, um, watch the film. <laughs> all right. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.